Japan's military wants a record $50 billion for next year's defense budget. The hike in spending aims to beef up Tokyo's capabilities against regional threats. The military has sounded the alarm on security concerns near remote islands claimed by both Japan and China. Defense forces are also concerned about rising tensions between the mainland and Taiwan. Japan plans to build five military ships and a submarine, along with purchasing 12 F-35 fighter jets. It also hopes to ramp up defense capabilities against cyber threats. For a closer look, Professor Stephen Nagi joins us live from Tokyo. How does Japan's defense spending plan compared to others in the region? Well, thanks, Steve, for having me. I think it's very clear that we should be comparing our defense budgets uh, between China, South Korea, and Japan. China's defense budget increase this year is 6.8 percent. Our South Korean neighbors are 5.8 percent, and Japan's is 2.8 uh, percent. Uh, and this is 2.8 uh, percent of the total GDP. So Japan's actual increase compared to its regional partners is not that uh, it's not that significant, um, and it's in line with I think the growing security demands uh, within the region. Japan's particularly concerned about peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits. It's, of course, uh, concerned about the East China Sea and the Senkaku Islands, as well as challenges in the South China Sea. And lastly, uh, nuclear weapons proliferation on the Korean Peninsula. So not a, a significantly huge amount of military spending compared to its neighbours, but in its efforts to bolster its arsenal, Professor Nagy, how far is this going to go then in tackling the existing security issues in the region? Well, Japan works very closely with its partner, the United States, but it's also built uh, security uh, or strategic partnerships with Australia, India, and uh, burgeoning partnerships with European countries. So um, what we could understand is this is a more of a, a force multiplier. Um, it adds value to those broader, uh, the broader U.S.-Japan alliance, but also those other strategic partnerships within the region. If you drill down into the budget, we see that there's investments in cyber, in, in cyber uh, maritime awareness capabilities. And these are seen by the Japanese defense establishment as the key areas of concern uh, in the next five to ten years. Uh, just quickly, Professor, Japan has identified China as its main national security threat. What exactly is Tokyo concerned about? Well, I think Tokyo looks at um, China's uh, growing assertiveness within the region. Uh, it's issuing of the 2016 Permit of Court of Arbitration decision rejecting China's claims in the South China Sea, as well as its gray zone tactics in both the East China Sea, the South China Sea, and lastly, the adoption of a new Coast Guard, uh, Coast Guard law allowing for the Chinese Coast Guard to use force uh, in its uh, domestic waters as really being challenges to um, how the Japanese understand uh, a free and open uh, Indo-Pacific vision of a rules-based order. Um, and I think that Japan's view is that if China was to follow um, and, and stay in line with uh, the international law that it's already been uh, agreed upon at the, at the United Nations, that this increase in um, defense budget would likely be unnecessary. So what we're seeing is um, Japan reacting to uh, a perceived assertiveness by China really in Japan's backyard. And, and I would like to really stress the fact that the East China Sea, the Taiwan Straits, and the, the South China Sea really are those critical lane, uh, sea lanes of communication that uh, transport and, um, energy resources and import and export of goods uh, in and out of, of the region. And that's critical to the Japanese economy. And of course, this is why they're looking at uh, China uh, with um, very clear eyes. All right, well, thank you so much for your time this evening. Senior Associate Professor Stephen Naki from the International Christian University in Tokyo.